Has the NFT market hit a local top and is DeFi the next trend for 2022 and beyond? G'day and welcome back to our morning crypto daily show here at Collective Shift. And today we're really seeing uh, off the back of some continual decline in the NFT market, maybe we have hit a local top of the past couple of months as the trading volume on OpenSea continues to decline. DeFi has taken a huge pounding down probably 78%, but I think I'm seeing a few opportunities there, which we'll touch on throughout this video, as well as we're gonna look at uh, old, uh, sorry, OpenSea competitor looks rare, uh, Ukraine, has received uh, a lot of money in charity uh, donations and they said they were going to do an airdrop, but it looks like they've now uh, flipped back on that and won't be doing an airdrop. We'll touch on that, as well as our high level evaluation of some DeFi projects, as I mentioned, what we're investing into and we'll wrap up at the end. So to begin with, the NFT market continues to cool as trading on Ethereum and Solana dips. So we actually launched our investment portfolio in NFTs I think it was in about February, middle of Feb. We probably bought at a local top. Uh, I definitely think the NFT trend will continue over the long term, but in the short term, we are seeing continual social trends, market trading volume decline. And uh, after record breaking January, Ethereum trading, which a lot of the NFTs are built on top of, also fell 33% in trading. So after a record shattering month of NFT trading volume, the leading marketplace OpenSea in January, uh, it continued to, to, uh, to cool where OpenSea recorded nearly $3.65 billion worth of trading volume in February alone between NFT, NFT sales on Ethereum and Polygon. Now, although the marketplace recorded three separate days with more than $200 million worth of Ethereum NFT trading volume, the daily volume chart suggests a general downward trend over the course of the month. Now we have seen Ethereum competitors start to pop up. One of those was LooksRare that launched and targeted OpenSea users. And they've also struggled to eat into the OpenSea market share with daily users remain low. So LooksRare was a super hyped project when it launched. But as you can see on our charts here from June Analytics that LooksRare is, uh, is, is, is minuscule compared to OpenSea with uh, the number of daily users on OpenSea, approximately 60,000 per day, and looks rare as about 1,100. So uh, continual decline there, and OpenSea continues to dominate the market in NFTs. Moving forward, we have seen Jerome Powell overnight come out and testify for the second day before the Senate Banking Committee that saying inflation will likely increase. He said the conflict in Ukraine is a troubling development for an uh, already congested global supply chain. He said, we're going to see upward pressure on inflation at least for a while, Powell said. The Ukraine-Russia war is not going to help at all with supply chains because ships are not being offloaded. Now, as you probably know, in the real world, inflation is already skyrocketing from houses to food prices to fuel, oil, literally everything. The, the price of things are going up. Even here in Melbourne, I think I paid the other day $6 for a coffee, you know, and um, I just think for the everyday person that isn't investing into Bitcoin, isn't investing into assets, the purchasing power of their dollar is continuing to decline. It's actually really scary. So uh, with Jerome Powell coming out and saying he thinks the inflation will likely increase, I, I really do feel for those people that aren't getting continual wage growth and also aren't invested into any hard assets like Bitcoin because just the purchasing power on the dollar is continuing to decline. Now, NFT marketplace OpenSea blocks users in Iran due to US sanctions. So a number of Iran-based OpenSea users report being suddenly barred, but the company has yet to uh, uh, confirm the block. So some territories and users on the US sanctions list from our services, says uh, OpenSea, uh, from our terms and services, sanctioned users or users in sanctioned territories from using our services, and they have a zero tolerance policy for the use of our services by sanctioned individuals or entities located in sanctioned countries. So more than five Iranian OpenSea users have reported the issue, three of whom confirmed with uh, Decrypt that, uh, that they use the site while in Iran. Uh, so that's pretty scary that, again, crypto, sh you know, in my opinion, should be this decentralized, open to all uh, platform that anyone in the world can use and access. But again, we're seeing some uh, platforms, uh, centralized platforms, whether it be government inflicted or just through their own decision making to continue to shut down accounts that they, they they don't want access to the platform. So yeah, pretty sad on that front. 
Uh, again, OpenSea as well has faced many frustrated users in recent months with a $1.7 million external phishing attack, a lawsuit over an alleged stolen board eight NFT, and a $1.8 million refund. I mean, it, you know, it, it would be hard being OpenSea, I, I would imagine, uh, being the leading marketplace for NFTs. It's a fairly new company. You know, they're going to have a lot of these issues as they're starting to grow and scale, and I think they'll get through them. But again, it's pretty... Um, Pretty shitty for those people in Iran that have been locked out all of a sudden. Now, Ukraine has received now over $50 million in crypto donations during the war. So over 90,000 separate donations in total. Uh, pretty pretty awesome, really, if you think about it. You know, in the past, before crypto, there hasn't been a, an easy way to send money to a charity or, a, or an organization globally and anywhere in the world and now you can do it instantaneously with crypto and you can see on the blockchain where they're sending their money what they're doing with it uh, which is uh, awesome and they can also spend it so obviously potentially with, with bank freezes and things like that if you're sending dollars you're trying to use a swift network whatever that might be the, the receiving end especially during a war not that I've, I've been through a war has uh you know you probably wouldn't be able to touch those funds so with crypto obviously you can you know send it around you can um buy goods and services with it, it you're going to hold it on a, on a cold storage it's basically yours to do whatever you want with so that's really exciting uh they ukraine did announce the other day which i spoke about yesterday they had announced an airdrop for those that donated to the the charity however they have cancelled that and plan to sell nfts instead so um the Ukrainian Minister for Digital Transformation uh, mentioned yesterday on a tweet after considerable uh, careful consideration they decided to cancel the airdrop uh, we do not have any plans to issue any fungible tokens at this point which suck because that sound like a great idea but that's out you know obviously pretty busy in a war <laughs> uh, now Kinji posted recently around uh, a high level evaluation of DeFi fundamentals so he believes that DeFi can revolution finance and select group of protocols one day displacing traditional financial institutions and giving the high long-term potential of blue chip DeFi protocols. He views most of his DeFi investments as long-term allocations. Now, furthermore, because DeFi tokens are down around 70 to 80% from all-time highs, he seems that he thinks that it's also an excellent time to start accumulating quality DeFi tokens. I also agree with the sentiment. I'm also dollar cost averaging into a couple, which we'll touch on soon. Uh, but he has looked at predominantly uh, revenue growth. So with DeFi, you can obviously extract the revenue growth metrics from these protocols. And he's uh, done a piece here, looking at the revenue growth denominated in USD. And he thinks that RV and Curve tokens, CRV, uh, as well as market dependent tokens, and we're in a pretty good position to, to continue to grow and defend market share, uh, similar to Uniswap. Uh, and he is also looking to avoid some of the newer DeFi tokens that are potentially overpriced, such as RBN. Now he's attached his worksheet below, so if you want to check out the data, you can sign up at Collective Shift for a free trial and you can have a look at all the uh, assets he's looking at and what he's buying. Now, again, Becoming a Collective Shift member, you can also see uh, all the investments that we're making live. You can see uh, our early stage crypto opportunities as well as our long-term growth portfolio. One of my favorite DeFi projects is Maple, MPL, and you can have a look at our uh, analysis on our platform, but basically it's institutional DeFi borrowing market, and uh, they recently signed a, a $1 billion loan deal with FTX. It's playing out over the course of this year, and um, we're starting to see uh, maple really take off as well so you can jump on the platform and check that out now if you don't like video you can sign up to our newsletter as well head over to collective shift for a weekly wrap up and we are also giving away our top five crypto projects with massive potential you can uh, download that for free over collective shift that's all for me from now if you like this video please like and subscribe give me a comment any feedback we've just started these out so uh, really looking forward to continue uh, coming to you daily melbourne time uh, and apart from that we'll wrap up there cheers bye for now